Elephants are the largest land mammals on Earth and have distinctly massive bodies, large ears, and long trunks. They use their trunks to pick up objects, trumpet warnings, greet other elephants, or suck up water for drinking or bathing, among other uses. Both male and female African elephants grow tusks, and each individual can either be left or right tusked, and the one they use more is usually smaller because of wear and tear. Elephant tusks serve many purposes. These extended teeth can be used to protect the elephant's trunk, lift and move objects, gather food, and strip bark from trees. They can also be used for defense. During times of drought, elephants use their tusks to dig holes to find water underground. Two genetically different African species exist, the savanna elephant and the forest elephant, with several characteristics that differentiate them both. The African savanna elephant is the largest elephant species, while the Asian forest elephant and the African forest elephant are of comparable, smaller size. Asian elephants differ in several ways from their African relatives, with more than 10 distinct physical differences between them. For example, Asian elephants' ears are smaller compared to the large fan-shaped ears of the African species. Only some male Asian elephants have tusks while both male and female African elephants grow tusks. The social life of many elephants revolves around herds and small groups. An elephant herd consists mostly of closely related female cows and their calves, which are led by a single matriarch who helps the entire group find food and water, avoid predators, and locate a shelter. The oldest daughter is almost always poised to inherit the matriarchal position upon the mother's death. A typical herd consists of around 10 individuals. If the herd grows too large, then some elephants may split off and form a new semi-independent group. The male bulls, on the other hand, either wander alone or form bachelor groups within specific dominance hierarchies. The males are much more likely to gather together during times of scarcity or in the presence of threats. They only come into contact with females when they want to mate. Elephants have all manner of ways to communicate with each other. The trunk seems to play a critical part in this. A raised trunk seems to indicate a greeting. A lower-ranking member of the herd will also place its tip into the mouth of a higher-ranked individual, perhaps as a conciliatory gesture. Despite the iconic trumpeting sounds, many of the noises produced by the elephant to communicate over long distances are actually too low for the human ear to detect. They also produce a growling noise from the stomach that seems to signify to others they are okay. Depending on the availability of food, the elephant may spend up to 18 hours a day feeding. The rest of the time is occupied by sleeping, bathing, cleaning itself, and bonding with the rest of the group. Playing and fighting are integral parts of their behavior. They tend to spar playfully with other elephants close to their own age. The elephant inhabits the savannas, deserts, marshes, and forests near rivers of Sub-Saharan Africa and South Asia. The Indian, Sumatran, Borneo, and Sri Lankan elephants are generally correspondent to those particular geographical regions, but this range is actually reduced from its greatest historical extent. The Asian elephant, for example, once had a much larger range stretching between Syria and China. The African forest elephant is now reduced to a small piece of land in the Congo Basin of Western Africa. The elephant is a herbivorous mammal whose only source of nutrients is vegetation. It needs an enormous amount of food to sustain itself. A typical individual consumes up to 330 pounds of food in a single day, although up to half of this may pass through the body without being properly digested. Elephants will eat almost any type of vegetation including grasses, leaves, fruits, twigs, roots, and bark. The exact composition of its diet tend to vary based on location and season. Herbivores generally have two different strategies for obtaining food. Browsing, in which they selectively feed on shrubs and trees above the ground, and grazing, in which they lightly feed on vegetation along the ground. Many elephants are both browsers in the dry season and grazers in the wet season. Aside from natural predators, the animal is under threat from poaching due to the value of their tusks, habitat loss, and growing conflict with people. 
Some of these threats are amplifying each other. As the animal's natural habitat diminishes from the spread of agriculture and residential housing, it comes into contact with people, which can result in trampled crops and damaged properties. This in turn may cause people to retaliate against them. A full-grown adult elephant faces no consistent threats in the wild. Its massive size and thick hide make it almost impervious to attacks. However, a juvenile calf may be vulnerable to hyenas, lions, tigers, leopards, and African wild dogs, so it seeks protection from the group. As everybody knows, elephants are extremely strong animals and have amazing qualities, but can they cope in North America? Any ecosystem on Earth can be found in North America, from the snowy tundras of Greenland to the tropics of Costa Rica. Deserts, forests, mountains, and everything in between occupy this territory along the wide variety of animals you'd expect to find. North America has a diverse array of wildlife species and is home to an estimated 457 mammals, 914 birds, 662 reptiles, and more than 300 amphibians, and 4,000 known arachnids. North America includes the United States, Canada, Mexico, and Greenland, each laden with diverse ecological systems that sustain these unique animal species. There are no elephants in North America now. However, five species of Proboscidea, the order in which elephants belong, roamed the lands of North America 13,000 years ago, which also included mammoths, dwarf mammoths, and mastodons. Skeletons of these gigantic creatures have been excavated in large numbers from various sites in regions like Naco, Arizona, and New York State. There have been several theories and speculations about the extinction of elephants from North America. One of them is the overkill hypothesis. The Clovis people, or the Paleo-Indians, were the first humans to arrive in North America in the late Pleistocene epoch around 13,000 years ago, which, as one may notice, is the same period when the elephants vanished, resulted in large-scale hunting of these creatures for food and skin, which eventually led to severe dwindling in their populations, termed as megafaunal crisis. Finally, after having coexisted for about a millennium with humans, the beasts lost the battle and became extinct. While the overkill hypothesis is the most credible theory, some archaeologists argue that even though the final blow to the species was dealt by humans, their population was already falling down by the time they had arrived. They claim the abrupt fluctuation in climate, a 1,300-year-long cold snap that took place around the time, as the most important reason behind their extinction. Asian elephants would probably thrive on the Gulf Coast. Florida, with its tropical climate and jungle-like habitats, would be an elephant paradise. The Everglades are a perfect place for these animals. The dense vegetation would be more than enough to support them. Asian elephants are also great swimmers, are no strangers to swampy terrain, and are perfectly suited to surviving floods. They are also known for island hopping and reaching new territories in search of food. The Caribbean might just get invaded by these animals as well, just like how Indonesia and Thailand were in their native habitat. African forest elephants fill a similar niche to Asian elephants, so they would probably also like the Gulf Coast, because they also like warm tropical forests. They would prefer drier parts of the region, though. They aren't as fond of swimming as their Asian relatives. African bush elephants would prefer southern U.S. states and Mexico. Any place which doesn't experience snowfall and is in an outright desert would make a suitable bush elephant habitat. They are well adapted to surviving droughts and heat and would probably have no problem adapting to the North American continent. Due to their size, they won't worry about predators unless you focus on the calves which they have to worry about wolves, bears, and possibly mountain lions. Now that you've heard our opinion, we want to know yours. What do you think would happen if elephants were relocated to North America? We're waiting for your answers in the comments. That's all for today. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. You can also leave a comment with what you would like to see in the following videos.
Thanks for watching. See you next time.